When I was first learning how to code, I remember getting frustrated many times because I wanted to be a programmer and didn't quite know how to get there. Now that I am a software developer, I often look back at some of the things I struggled with in the beginning. I often ask myself, if I could start over with the knowledge I have now, what would I do differently? Here are the five steps I would take today to become a full-time programmer. Step one, pick a programming language. Now I know what you're thinking, you want to pick the programming language that has the highest demand that can get you a job the quickest. Now that is honestly a solid approach, but I would actually encourage you to consider the different career paths a computer programmer can go down. For instance, there's front-end development, back-end development, full-stack development, mobile development, game development, data science, the list goes on and on. And each one of these career paths has a specific set of programming languages that go with it. For instance, a front-end developer is going to learn TypeScript or JavaScript. A back-end developer can learn JavaScript, Go, PHP, Java. The list goes on and on. For mobile development, you're going to want to learn Kotlin or Swift. For data science, you're going to want to learn R or Python. So I would spend some time there learning which careers you can go down and trying to pick which one you like the most. If you don't know what you want to do, check out the 2022 developer survey on Stack Overflow. Over 60% of professional developers are using JavaScript in their day to day. Python is high up there as well. So I would encourage you to check out either Python or JavaScript because they're such high demand languages and you can get a job with those. Once you pick your language, you're ready for step two. Step two, start learning. It's important to not overthink this step. If you don't do anything at all, you're not going to progress. That's why it's important to not overthink it and just dive into the code. Make sure you aren't setting unrealistic goals that you'll never be able to keep. If you set goals to code for four hours every day for a week, you're probably not going to accomplish that. You should start off by setting goals for 30 minutes every day for a week or two and then upping that amount of time. You have to remember if you're going to the gym to pump some iron, if you only go once a week, you're not going to have any gains. Encoding is the same thing. You're never going to be able to build up that muscle memory if you don't code every day. So I'd encourage you to start small and then up that amount of time. You want to start off with the basics of the programming language, data types, conditionals, loops, object-oriented programming. Once you get the hang of writing code in this language, you should check out some tutorials on Udemy or YouTube. There's a great tutorial on Udemy by Dr. Angelo Yu. Write the code line for line. Be curious about it. If you have questions, put the questions in the forum and someone will answer them. This is a very important part of your journey where you're going to learn all the basics of your programming language and the different tools that you use with that programming language. And after you're finished up doing some tutorials and learning more about your programming language, you should be ready for step three. Step three, create a portfolio. After learning from other people, this is your time to really practice what you've learned. In this step, you're gonna to wanna to brainstorm some ideas. For instance, if you wanna be a front-end developer, Google front-end developer projects that'll showcase your skills the best. This is honestly going to be the time when you'll learn the most. You're going to run into some problems in your projects and you're going to be stopped dead in your tracks. There's going to be times when you're stopped for three, four hours because you don't understand how to move forward. But during this time, you're going to learn the most. Remember, if you're a self-taught developer with no computer science degree, you are competing against computer science degree students. So you have to really showcase your skills in your projects and show that you understand what you're doing. For example, if you're a full stack developer, you should be creating apps that have a front end and back end that perform CRUD operations. If you don't know what CRUD is, it's create, read, update, and delete from a database. Front end developer, you should be able to pull data from an API and display that on a web page. You should be really good at that. You should also be able to create aesthetically pleasing websites. At the end of this step, you wanna create your portfolio website. This is a website that basically showcases your skills. You want to put three to four of your best projects on there. You also want to list out the skills that you are most comfortable with. You also want to put your contact information as well and also a resume. This is an important part that a hiring manager is going to look at to see if you really know your stuff. This is going to set you apart from a computer science student. Step four, start networking. If you haven't created a LinkedIn profile yet, do that now and fill out everything in the profile. Add some contacts, 
add everyone that you went to high school with. If you have some college education, add anyone that you've met in college. Also join some groups on LinkedIn and post some of your projects. Join some self-taught developer groups. That will be a great way for you to get some networking in. Another thing, I know it can be a tough thing to post things on LinkedIn out of fear of rejection, but I would encourage you just to post things. There's no telling who will see your posts and who knows they may have the ability to help you out. I know some of you may be considering programming as a career because you don't want to ultimately have to talk to anyone in your career, but you're just going to have to get over that. Being a self-taught developer means that you've taken the tougher road. Computer science students have it easier. You being self-taught, you need to be able to network. You need to find the right people. This is the most important step. You need to work hard at networking. That's what's ultimately going to get you a job. Step five, the job market. This is the last step of your journey and often can be the toughest part in your journey. There's no telling how long this is going to last. I know for me, it took me about four months and it was almost a full-time job for me just putting out applications. I would encourage you to just apply to whatever jobs you think that you match with. Uh, I would say if you have about 50% of the skills that are listed on the job application, I would apply to it regardless of the years of experience that you need. Some of those can be crazy. You're going to start doing some coding interviews and you're going to fail them. You're going to do terrible, but practice is key to getting better at problem solving like that. So I would encourage you to just get a lead code subscription and just start with the easiest ones and just keep going until you can't do them anymore. Give yourself a set time limit that you have to solve the problem in. And if you can't solve it, then check out the answer and make sure you really understand where the answer is coming from. So how long is it going to take you to become a programmer? Honestly, there's no telling how long it's going to take you. But if you're only coding once a week, you're never going to be a developer. You have to put some time into it. Like I said earlier, if you want to gain muscle in the gym, you have to go to the gym more than once a week. In order to learn that muscle memory, you have to code all the time. Code, code, code. Keep doing it.